Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be making a start on my review of The Pale Horse by Agatha Christie. So as always, I'm going to read you the blurb, then we're going to go through and look at some of my tabs, and then I'm going to come back at the end and give you my overall thoughts. What I will say is there's no Marple or Poirot in this, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. And Christie makes up for it with a familiar face, um, who we'll get to with the tabs. When an, elderly when an elderly priest is murdered, the killer searches the victim so roughly that his already ragged cassock is torn in the process. What was the killer looking for? And what had a dying woman confided to the priest on her deathbed only hours earlier? Mark Easterbrook and his sidekick Ginger Corrigan are determined to find out. Maybe the three women who run the Pale Horse public house and who are rumoured to practice the dark arts can provide some answers. So right at the start we have someone, someone's just enjoying a little bite to eat. Uh, I'll just read it out to you I guess. It seemed an odd juxtaposition to me. Bananas I connected with my childhood, or occasionally flambe with sugar and rum. Bacon, in my mind, was firmly associated with eggs. However, when in Chelsea, eat as Chelsea does. I agreed to a nice banana and bacon sandwich. This is actually kind of Christy satirising in a way, um, like the trendy Chelsea scene, I guess. She was talking about like beatniks and stuff in it. We have some insane character names. Thomasina Tuckerton, but they just call her Tommy Tuckerton. And then on the next page, she hears from her cousin, Rhoda Despard. And then we get uh, our um, other uh, well-known face that I, I mentioned. Mrs. Oliver was a well-known writer of detective stories. So that's Ariadne Oliver. She's appeared in a few others. So we actually get a mention of one of, or a throwback to one of them. And um, Ariadne Oliver basically allows Christy to get a bit autobiographical. So she's kind of based upon herself. She's a female detective novelist. And um, so I'm just going to read this passage out here. She says, um, so someone's been at the door and she says, it might have been anybody. Some silly woman who wanted me to open a bazaar. Or the man about Millie's insurance card, which Millie absolutely refuses to have. Or the plumber. But that would be too much good fortune, wouldn't it? Or it might be someone wanting an interview. Asking me all those embarrassing questions, which are always the same every time. What made you first think of taking up writing? How many books have you written? How much money do you make? Etc, etc. I never know the answers to any of them and it makes me look such a fool. Not that any of that matters because I think I'm going mad over this cockatoo business. And so here again we get um, an example of the clash of cultures I guess. What extraordinary places have you been going to? Asked Mrs Oliver. This was in a coffee bar in Chelsea. Oh Chelsea, said Mrs Oliver. Everything happens there I believe. Beatniks and Sputniks and Squares and the Beat Generation. I don't write about them much because I'm so afraid of getting the terms wrong. It's safer, I think, to stick to what you know. Such as? People on cruises and in hotels and what goes on in hospitals and on parish councils and sales of work and music festivals and girls and shops and committees and daily women and young men and girls who hike round the world in the interests of science and shop assistants. And then we get this, which I like, because this is a reference to, uh, what's it called? Dead Man's Folly. Uh, the fact is that my cousin Rhoda Despard has got a church fate and Never again, said Mrs Oliver You know what happened last time I arranged a murder hunt and the first thing that happened was a real corpse I never quite got over it Fun fact as well um, So it's stylized here in the French way I don't know if you can see it um, And fate with the little hat over the, um, the E Basically in French they use that little symbol with a hat to say that a letter's missing um, because of how it's been sort of French aside from Latin basically. So uh, fate originally had an S in it, hence having a little at, and so it used to be fest, uh, which is why, you know, it means party, you know, feast. And uh, this, this guy wants to become an actor and his dad says, see what you can make of it, my boy. You'll find your nose Sir Henry Irving. And uh, Henry Irving is who uh, Bram Stoker used to manage, very like famous actor of uh, the Victorian era. So I just thought it was cool to get a little little mention of him. So I quite like this because one of my friends was talking to me about this the other day because she'd only just heard this theory. But I like how it was even outdated back in Christie's day. Um, didn't somebody called Bacon really write Shakespeare? asked Poppy. That theory is quite out of date nowadays, said David kindly. And what do you know of Bacon? He invented gunpowder, said Poppy triumphantly. Oh yeah, and then it turns out, um, so yeah, there was Mrs. Dane Calthrop. Mr. Dane Calthrop is a vicar. And I definitely remember him now. And I'm wondering if he was, if these two were in um, Dead Man's Folly with the previous Ariadne Oliver book. And then uh, I always get amused when there's a reference to pussies. Uh, it's something that Agatha Christie uses a lot to refer to older women. So uh, somebody says, I think your imagination is running away with you a little, Mark. I dare say your middle-aged pussies are quite genuine in believing it all themselves. I'm sure they're very nasty old pussies. 
And then speaking of amusing double entendres, um, I always like to spot the ejaculations in old books. Uh, it's like, it used to be used as a phrase just to me, ah! that was an ejaculation, I just ejaculated at you. Um, but we don't really use it like that anymore, which is a shame. But it, it does also lead to some incredibly entertaining sentences, like, like the below. Um, Polio, ejaculated Mr. Osborne. Oh dear, dear. That does seem to settle the matter. Oh, Skype. One of my clients. So yeah, enjoying it. So I thought this was quite a funny little line from Rhoda here. She says, uh, being in love has a very bad effect on men. It seems to add all their wits. Now women are just the opposite. On top of the world, looking radiant and twice as good looking as usual. Funny, isn't it? That it should suit women and only make a man look like a sick sheep. Thought this was an interesting observation. Good, good little thing to include in a murder mystery. Um, uh, somebody says, uh, and then I thought, if they don't pull the curtains too soon, and you may have noticed people don't when daylight saving first ends, they've got in the habit of expecting it to be dark an hour later. I might creep up and take a peep. I don't know if that's necessarily true, because in my case, I just close the curtains when it starts getting dark. I don't, I don't know what time I close the curtains at. And then after all the other crazy names we've had in this, someone's poking fun at the name The Regency. And uh, later on she says, a woman called Edith Binns. Comic name, isn't it? Well, not, not as comic as like Thomasina Tuckerton or whatever it was. Yeah, overall, I did enjoy this book. I mean, it's Agatha Christie, so I always enjoy reading her stories. I like the way it had a feel of one of her like nursery rhyme mysteries almost. Uh, there was a little bit of supernatural and uh, mysticism to it, but not too much and not so much that it ruined the story, which it really does, I think, if you, miss, if you mix mysticism and supernatural and the occult with um, like crime, especially when it's like purported to be like true crime and like gritty crime. Um, but yeah, it doesn't have Miss Marple or Hercule Poirot in it, which might put you off. And definitely, actually, if you're new to Christie, it's probably not the best one to start. But I did enjoy it and would say if you're exploring her back catalogue, definitely uh, check it out, The Pale Horse. I gave it a 3.75 out of 5. So there we have it, that's what I thought of The Pale Horse by Agatha Christie. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book if you read it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe for more and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye bye.